Last year I did a bunch of the yellow ones in grow bags and they turned out so creamy and tasty. They were some of the best potatoes I've ever had. But today, I'm going to show you what I do to plant potatoes when I'm using grow bags. YouTube gardeners today I'm talking about uh, planting some potatoes. I was able to get a hold of some seed potatoes at the local hardware store. This one's Adirondack blue. This one's a mixture of the Adirondack blue, some red potatoes and some gold potatoes. Last year I did a bunch of the yellow ones in grow bags and they turned out so creamy and tasty. They were some of the best potatoes I've ever had. But today I'm going to show you what I do to plant potatoes when I'm using grow bags. For starters I'm going to roll down the sides of this grow bag reason I'm doing that is because we're not going to fill this container up all the way. With potatoes, you want to start with about three inches in the bottom, three inches of soil in the bottom. Then you're going to stick the potatoes in there. After that, you got to put about another two or so inches of soil on top of that and then let them grow. They'll shoot up their green shoots and as they, the green shoots grow, you need to pile up more dirt on there. It's called hilling up. And the reason you do that is because the, the longer stem underneath the ground leads to more tubers, which leads to more potatoes in this case. So I'm going to lay that down. I've got a mixture of really good potting soil, high, high quality organic potting soil. I added some worm castings and a little bit of this um, organic fertilizer. I need a little bit more. So if I had the sides up all the way, then the shoots wouldn't be able to access the sunlight and wouldn't be able to photosynthesize and continue growing. So in this first bag, we'll do the Adirondack Blue. So you can see these potatoes, I've had them for a few weeks now and they're already starting to grow. So I definitely need to get those into the soil. Beautiful purple color. I've never done these, so I'm curious what the foliage is gonna look like. So it doesn't matter what direction you put these in normally, you just have to make sure the potato has some eyes on it. Before I add the seed potatoes, now that I have three inches of soil in there, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and add a little bit more fertilizer in there. And I'm also going to add about two tablespoons of soil acidifier. Potatoes like to have a little bit of acid soil. So I've added the fertilizer and the soil acidifier. I'm kind of mix that in. Now that that's mixed in, we're going to stick in the seed potatoes with the sprouts pointing up. If there weren't sprouts, it does not matter what direction orientation you put the potatoes in, they'll figure it out and grow upward. Now why seed potatoes? Like you may have heard me mention the seed potatoes. They're different than regular potatoes. You can just get a regular potato from the grocery store and as long as it has the little eyes on it, it will grow. You can chop it up into pieces. You can even chop these up into pieces and leaving at least one eye per piece and grow. That's a way to multiply how many you're growing. You'll get more money for your dollar, I guess. But uh, this, this stuff from the grocery store, um, they're a bigger potato. They've used all their energy to create a big tuber and they're kind of old. One way I've heard it described is they don't have their youthful vigor like seed potatoes do. So seed potatoes are young. They are um, harvested early before they get big so they have all that youthful vigor which helps them grow better potatoes in the next season. So smallest grow bag I would do these in is a seven gallon. Anything smaller than that and you're just going to reduce your yield greatly. So these are 15 gallon bags and they go pretty tall because I've got them because I also want to do some carrots, hopefully get some longer tall carrots. But the last year when I did them, I did them in a 10 gallon bag and that worked fine. It did seem totally full and like I could have gotten more potatoes if there was more room, but I got a lot of potatoes out of just one 10 gallon bag. Now I'm going to go ahead and bury these again with up to about two inches of soil above the plant or above the potato. And that one is done for now. And now that I've got these potatoes in here, 
Um, a few things I want to cover. The grow bags have uh, a lot more aeration to them. So roots grow better, roots are a little bit healthier, but they need to be watered a little bit more frequently. So you'll have to keep a good eye on them. Um, they love full sun. You want to get a minimum of six hours of sun, but they will thrive in full sun, all day sun, if you can do it, if you have a place for them. I'm going to go ahead and do this second one now. Again, start by folding down the sides of the bag. Go with another three inches of soil. Handful of fertilizer, about two tablespoons of soil acidifier. You can also add extra peat moss if you want. Peat moss is naturally acidic. Mix that in. The reason you need soil on bottom, three inches of soil, is because you need to have somewhere for these roots to grow. That could be an Adirondack blue, but it just looks a little bit different color than the ones I had in the previous bag. The yellow one. Probably another yellow one. And this has got to be a red one. There's some red color to that. I'm going to bury this with two inches of soil. Go over it one more time. The reason we hill them up is anywhere along that stem underneath the dirt, underneath the soil, it'll shoot out and grow more potatoes. So you start in a pot that's really deep. You might be wondering, why don't you just have a big deep pot that you throw a bunch of soil on top? Well, the potato doesn't have enough energy to shoot a sprout to shoot the sprout all the way up to the top of this pot. So you can do the same thing if you're growing these in ground. You bury them in the soil, and then as the, the plants start to grow, you add dirt to it, and that's why it's called hilling. It doesn't really look like a hill inside of a pot, but when you're growing them in the ground, it looks more like a hill. And that's where the term comes from. So you just, as the plant grows, you bury it more, you roll the sides up, bury it more, all the way until this pot, fully extended, has got soil all the way to the top, and that's where you'll stop filling it up and leave it at that point. Potatoes really don't like wet feet, which is one reason they do well in grow bags because they have such good drainage. Um, the potting soil that I'm using has peat moss, some compost, uh, for aged forest products, sand, and it's a really good draining mix, one that I like to use. You can always make your own recipe. There's plenty of YouTube recipes, um, plenty of recipes you can find on YouTube. But that's it for as far as planting potatoes in grow bags. Other root veggies are very similar. I'm gonna do another grow bag. I have one more this size that I will fill all the way to the top with carrots. I'll show you how I do that. So this is the variety of carrot seed that I'm gonna do. I had these planted last year and they really turned out well. All right, so I'm gonna start by filling this grow bag up. And I'm going to go all the way pretty near to the top of this one. The reason I'm trying these in grow bags is because I have the rocky soil. I'm not sure if you can see any of the rocks in the bottom of the video screen here. But every one of these rocks is actually from my yard. When I was finishing the backyard, I decided to save everything that was smaller than a baseball and use it for gravel. And I have a probably a 40-foot stretch and another 40-foot stretch. It's the worst rocky soil I've ever seen. But when you're growing carrots, if they hit something hard like a rock or really hard patch of dirt, that's when a fork and start to become deformed instead of being nice grocery store looking carrots. They taste the same, but sometimes they just don't grow very well. So I'm going to try them for the first time in grow bags and see how that goes. Looks like we're just about perfect. Let that settle down a little bit. I think a little bit more. That will also settle when I water it. Again, this soil has some of my own homemade compost in it, and it has some worm castings from my worm bin and a little bit of this organic potting soil, excuse me, organic fertilizer in it. So carrot seeds are really tiny, really fine. So there's a few tricks I have that I can show you. First, I'm gonna remove any of the bigger pieces that are kicking around on top. I'm getting this really smooth. 
So follow the package instructions. These need to be sewed one quarter to one half inch depth. All right, so I've got this smooth. You, you can even go so far as to use something else to smooth it down. I just like to have an even surface to start with, with these fine seeds. Again, they're very fine seeds. They can easily blow away in the wind. So you probably can hear it on the microphone. There's definitely some wind today. I'm gonna sew these a little bit extra thick, um, meaning I'm gonna put way too many seeds down. It's because these seeds are about a year old, but I wanna use them up. I'm afraid their germination rate won't be quite as high as I want it to. Ultimately, I'll thin this down to, I'd say probably four carrots is all I'm gonna do in here. But there's a bunch of seed. And then one of the tricks I like to do is I get some of my seed starting mix and to get that quarter to half inch layer that these carrots like. But this mix is also really light and can blow away. And I have a trick for that as well. And it's something that's really helpful for carrot seed germination in particular. Problem is carrot seeds are very sensitive to drying out. So it's hard to keep them moist if you aren't right on top of it, being there every day, making sure they are staying moist. It's easy for them to just not germinate. So I'd say I got about a quarter inch of soil on there. I'm gonna go grab my other trick that I wanna show you. All right, so while I was off camera, I prepared this piece of burlap. It's a common tip you'll see among gardeners. I got a piece of burlap, it's pretty cheap online or even at a fabric store. And you just lay it on top, gently. This helps keep some of the moisture in. The burlap just stays on there until the seeds germinate. How are you gonna know? Well, you're gonna gently Start peeling this back and see if you have any sprouts coming up. As soon as you see sprouts, then it's okay to take this off. Uh, you don't need them to stay moist as critically as you do when they're still in the seed phase or in the germination phase. So you'll just peel it back gently and then you'll know to take it off. Our carrot seeds can sometimes be considered picky. And I'd agree there. I've had pretty good success every year with them germinating, but I, I overseed. I do too many partially because these are older seeds, but also because I want to have up my chances of having the number of carrots that I want. It's easier to thin them out. And usually in a seed pack of carrots, there's hundreds, and I don't need hundreds of carrots. We just don't eat that many. So I'm going to go ahead and get some water, water this in, and then stick it in the greenhouse. It's not quite warm enough here to uh, get things to germinate. So if you found this helpful, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any videos you'd like me to do, any questions you have, please let me know. And you can also email me at one, the number one, curious.gardener at gmail.com. Feel free to email me with questions. That'd be great. I'll make some videos and help you learn some things you might have some questions about. Again, thanks for watching.